Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. I am Terry Murphy, the mayor of Moraine. I would like to welcome everyone to the city of Moraine's memorial service. Today, we will be honoring our finest, but first, I would like to introduce a few people. Our city manager, Mike Davis. <laughs> Council person, Mike Daughtery. <laughs> Council person, Don Burchett. Council person, Ora Allen. Yeah. Council person and Deputy Mayor, Shirley Witt. Yeah. Please rise as we have the posting of the colors by the Moraine Police Honor Guard. Detail, attention. Present, on. If everyone could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Next, I would like to welcome our guest speaker, Chaplain Brian T. Hargis. Brian began in 1991 and served as Unit Supply Specialist at Fort Bragg. He continued with, with to grow his military career and recently retired with over 30 years of service. Thank you, Brian. 
Brian is also the author of Marriage is a Four-Letter Word, the founder of the Green Beret Unlimited LLC. Please welcome Brian as he leads us with an invocation. I invite you to join me in prayer. Almighty God, Father of this great nation, the liberator of the oppressed and the author of peace, even today, Lord, we honor our U.S. military veterans and those honorable men and women who serve to protect our country's freedom and ultimately our U.S. Constitution. Lord, we're mindful and reflected of the selfless sacrifice made by each and every one of them. And I ask for your blessing upon these veterans that are currently serving at bases across the U.S., such as Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Lord, and around the world, and our allied countries, such as Germany, Italy, Kuwait, and other places. Lord, thank you for the veterans that have served our nation's wars and those that are currently serving. Their actions do not go unnoticed. And Heavenly Father, may every veteran under our nation's armed forces feel true, uh, truly feel humbled and, uh, Lord, appreciated and valued today on this special day. May no one feel forgotten or neglected, including those 22 a day who contemplate or commit suicide. Lord, I pray that you will bless them and bless this ceremony as well as we pay homage and heritage to our veterans. As you look down from heaven above upon the city of Moraine, Lord, I pray for your smile upon the ceremony and all that are in attendance today. In Christ's name, give you honor. Amen. Amen. <coughs> veterans Day. Originally, it was known as Armistice Day, and it marks the end of World War I. That was took place on November 11th of 1980. In 1954, after having been through World War II and the Korean War, uh, it was urged by veteran services organizations at the 83rd U.S. Congress make an amendment replacing the word armistice with veterans. And November 11th was unanimously approved as a day to honor American veterans with the service to our country, whereas Veterans Day primarily seeks to honor the living, Memorial Day seeks to honor those that have passed. So pinch yourself if you need to determine whether you're alive or living today. I know that we have some veterans in our, uh, in, our congreg in our service today, and I thank you, and I want you to know that you are honored. So veterans of our U.S. military armed forces, are there any Navy in here? You raise your hand if you, if you served in the Navy. All right, we have one. Uh, hey, all right, yes. How about Air Force? How about Air Force? Here we are in the metropolis for Air Force. And we have no one. All right. This is, all right, we have Air Force. Hey, it doesn't matter if it's a reserves or the guard or active duty. You are all appreciated. How about uh, Marines? Do we have any Marines? Yeah, Marines. Oh, yeah, we have three of you. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Coast Guard. Any Coast Guard? Small branch. Okay, how about Space Force, the newest? That would be very, very unique. It really would be. But, yes, we're seeing that. All right, uh, today, do we have any in attendance? that were a part of World War II, that were serving in World War II. How about Vietnam? North Korean War? Very few of us that are, that are older in years here as I look around, but know that they are appreciated, as well as Desert Storm. Any Desert Storm veterans or Operation Enduring Freedom? All right, but a lot of supporters anyways. Thomas Paine, uh, one of our American founding fathers, he stated, those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must undergo the fatigue of supporting it. And to you veterans here today, you have borne that burden and you've experienced the fatigue of waging war in order to bring about peace. And to you I say thank you. To our first responders, uh, we're cluttered in this room. We're honored to have you uh, in our midst as well as supporting our veterans and also the battle that you face. To you I say thank you. And uh, thank you for the example. That inspired me to join as well 33 years ago. It says every single veteran who raised their hand and swore oath remembers that experience. You do remember it, don't you? And uh, for me, it all began in 1990, right at the end of my junior year, going into my senior year. My best friends from high school were a year or two ahead of me. And so they began to join. Ronnie joined the Air Force. Chris and Philip joined the Army. Rod joined the Navy. And I had one friend, Tim, who joined the Marines. And so I was inspired and found myself, of all places, in a Xenia military recruiting station. I was 18 years old and full of energy, but I was too dumb to be in the Air Force. Uh, yeah, and I was too smart to be a Marine. 
that you're supposed to laugh at these jokes. And uh, I was too big to be in the Navy, you know, I can't imagine being on those ships. Uh, but the Army was just right, because when you can't join any of the other branches, you just, the Army takes you. That's how it is. So the fact is, I joined the Army, I joined to jump out of airplanes and get some money for college. I, I, was, I was young, and I, I wanted to be a police officer, and, uh, but at 19, I couldn't carry a weapon, and uh, the chances of getting hired were probably few. So I said, well, I'm going to join the Army like my friends did, and uh, I want to jump out of planes. and get." To Remember the commercial in the 1980s? It said, get an edge on life in the Army. Be all that you can be. And they show you all the coolest stuff of them jumping out of airplanes and, and riding on these, uh, these boats going down the river with machine guns. And that just... And that just, I was just, I was just so overwhelmed by that. It's like, that's what I want to do because I hear my friends are doing that. So I, I uh, went down to recruiting station and, and joined up with the Army. But uh, to most, to be able to, you know, want to jump out of planes, that was crazy. But the Army said, hey, we'll take you. So um, I, I, I was bused to the military entrance processing station called MEPS uh, down in Cincinnati, Ohio. And what they did for two days, you remember those days? They tried two days, they assess you mentally, but mostly physically from head to toe. And I remember having some arches that were quite rounded. They were more flat. I remember rolling those on Coke bottles to try to get in because people said they might reject you. Come to find out they were taking just about everyone, and I fit the bill. I, I remember later on memorizing eye chart. My eyes were so bad I had to memorize it so I could get in. Uh, D-F-P-O-T-E-C and... Depotech and Flops, F L. yeah, anyways, I memorized it, so it looked like I have 20-20. The point is, I wanted to be in really bad, just as much as some of you wanted to serve in uniform, serve the city, serve in positions to make a difference. And the, the last stage of that MEPS was the acceptance stage. That's where you swear in the oath. Just like I look around in uniform, you swore in the oath. You swore to, to uh, protect and defend to serve is what we did. And for those veterans here, Every veteran remembers the time you raised your right hand and you swore to the U.S. Constitution. You remember that. And for me, it was November the 19th, 1991. So just over uh, 30, what are we, 32 years ago and some change. Here we are coming up on that event. But on that, uh, on, on that day that I, I swore the oath, man, I've never forgot it. And if you're a veteran in here, for those of you that aren't veterans, but you have been around those oath ceremonies, it goes something like this. If you're a veteran, you can repeat after me. And if you're in uniform, it's probably something like this. You remember it. I you state your name. You do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I, uh, let's see, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the regulations of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. And that oath that we state, that you state, veterans, that joins us together like no other bond. It's like the brother, the sisterhood, just like those that are in military service in uniform, like our uh, color guard, those that are in uniform, you take that oath that, that defines you until the grave. You know, less than 1% of our population are veterans. Less than 1% join the military. That's, that's quite ironic when you think of how many millions we have in our country. Less than 1% of adult society uh, raises the right hand and says that oath. So if you're near one of the veterans in here, look at them and say, hey, you're a one percenter. You're a one percenter. You're a one percenter. Thank you for our service. Now, we're not talking about a motorcycle club, but think about it. You're a one percenter, less than one percent. Wow. And that's so cool that you can, uh, you can recognize veterans. Usually, by the way, they stand or they carry themselves, or maybe they're you know, maybe they're in a restaurant and put the back to, you know, security measures, all that. You can usually tell how they carry themselves besides pins and lapels and that kind of stuff. But it's nice to see a veteran and thank them for their service. Winston Churchill once said, never in the field of human conflict was so much owned by so many, so few. So today, in honor of service, I would ask you to take the time to honor veterans in a few different ways. All right. Here's what I'd ask you to do. Number one, first, volunteer to help a veteran or service member regardless of whether or not you're a veteran. Volunteer to help them. And we've had many veterans around, many have relatives that are veterans, wounded veterans, et cetera, who, uh, who could use your compassion, care, and support. And we, hey, there's no outpouring, there's a lot of outpouring of that here around that I see, but find a way to help them, whether through the VA office or volunteerism in many ways, uh, family in, in our communities, or whatever help it can be, try to find a way to help a veteran. Number two, second, make an effort to promote the military service for the next generation. 
for the next generation coming up to fill those voids and those gaps. We do have a recruiting deficit. There's reasons for that. But now more than ever, with the buildup of uh, the future, man, it would be good to see that next generation step up and serve. The benefits are well, but more than that, it's just raising that hand in honor of that oath and supporting our Constitution um, and serving in the military. And finally, if you are a vet, I encourage you to share your story. Let it be known. I like to know, I like to hear from you. I like to know your stories because all of us have different stories of where we hail from, what we've done in the service. You may say, oh, you know, it's insignificant. And my father served in the Ohio Army National Guard as a, as a driver, as a truck driver. And he said, oh, I didn't do much. I just, you know, served for a couple years. It was either that or get drafted. And I said, no, you know, that's very, very important. My grandfather, who passed away about five years ago, he uh, served in Omaha Beach Invasion. He was the second wave. And he told stories, very few, but he told stories about how getting through that wave, and after 20, 24 hours, they finally were able to have a break and, and be in a position where he could put on some dry socks. He was, just, he was wet for 24 hours, wanted to put on dry socks, besides uh, all the carnage around him. And he took his pack off and went to pull those socks out, and, and they started to shred because a bullet had passed through his pack. So you hear stories like that and say, wow, what a veteran to, to go through that. And, um, and I, I want to encourage you to thank a veteran and to make an effort to promote the service and share your stories if you are a veteran, because after all, you are the 1%. Now, the more we talk about our service, the impact service has on us and those around us. And today, we have numerous examples of selfless service and sacrifice to reflect upon. So let's use the opportunity now, as we're doing, to thank our veterans, and if you're watching veterans, hey, thank you for your service, and let's reflect upon that service and demonstrate appreciation, let you know that you are appreciated, you are valued, you are cared for, you are loved, and even if there's some in society that reject that or don't care for that, know that in this place right now in the city of Moraine, you are valued, appreciated, loved, and cared for. Thank you. Thomas Jefferson stated, the price of freedom is, is eternal vigilance. Today we give thanks. To live in a country where citizens from every generation willingly and courageously raise their hand to stand that watch. So 19 years, uh, what is it, 19 days, when I was, let's see, 19 days ago, October 24th, about 19 days, I retired uh, from nearly 33 years of service. Wow, I'm excited for that. I spent um, time, my first, remember I wanted to jump out of planes, like four years on active duty. My goal was to be all I can be, right, and get out and be a cop. And I applied for the city of Moraine in 1989, and they didn't accept me. <laughs> I think you guys hired your dispatcher. And then I uh, applied for Cincinnati, and uh, they lost my file. I mean, all, all kinds of things. Finally, I got hired by the city of Dayton, and I worked for Dayton PD for 99 to 2003. But along with that, I stayed in the National Guard. And, and I was also in Special Forces as a Green Beret with, uh, out of Columbus, Ohio, Rickenbacker. And so I was gone, felt like I was gone more than I was, uh, you know, uh, contributing to the city. And uh, the Lord just changed things up, and I ended up going back on active duty. And so for the last 15 years, though, I've been serving as a chaplain, bringing soldiers to God and God to soldiers. Because God just, he, got, he radically flipped my life uh, from a police officer and a Green Beret uh, into the ministry. And, and it, that's another story. So, but I thank God for what he's done in my life. Uh, and I thank, I thank the Lord that I could serve with veterans. And now at this time, just like I said, 19 days ago, now enter into the field where you are to be a veteran along with you. So um, City of Moraine, thanks for having me out here today. And let's appreciate our veterans. So veterans, if you're here today, the ones that raise your hand, identified your branch of service on your feet, stand at attention, please. I know you're like, what in the world? Present arms. Know that I appreciate you. City of Moraine, we appreciate you. Order arms. And thank you for your service today and sacrifice. And I feel proud to serve with you. You may be seated. For those not in the military, hey, thank you. Thank you for choosing to share this day, this special day, to show your support for them and for those around you. No, it's not in vain. It is the, uh, a legend of heroes, past, present, and hopefully in the future. You are the one percenter. So thank you, veterans. God bless for now and forevermore. Okay. And now 
I wish to I wish to recognize the following veteran and staff whose names appear on gray bricks on this walkway. Ron Musk, who served in the Navy from 1976 to 1996. He was a senior chief petty officer and nuclear trained electronics technician while serving. Since retiring, Ron and his wife Ellen of 37 years and their son Noah have been Moraine residents and great friends to many of their neighbors for over 25 years. Thank you. We would also like to recognize any current or former military personnel that are here today. And now I have a proclamation to read. Whereas it is the responsibility of the mayor and council of the city of Moraine to recognize occasions of outstanding significance and whereas the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women who served in the armed forces and have been vital in maintaining the freedoms in the way of life enjoyed by the people of the United States. And whereas Veterans Day was established to honor all who had fought in various American wars and for citizens to observe the day by remembering the sacrifices of all those who fought to promote an enduring peace. And whereas Veterans Day is a day for every American, no matter what race, religion, or political affiliation, they may be to reflect on the price of our liberty. And whereas Veterans Day is an opportunity to commemorate the contributions of living veterans in a time to consider the legacy of freedom and liberty that have been passed to us. Now, therefore, I, Terry Murphy, Mayor of the City of Moraine, Ohio, do hereby proclaim today, November 11, 2024, as Veterans Day in the City of Moraine in Ohio. And I urge all residents to recognize the value, the valor, and sacrifice of our veterans through ceremonies, prayers, and patriotic activities in our community. And I want to thank everyone that came here today to honor our veterans. Thank you very much.